Welcome to FaithCast, a Faith in the Forest ministry. Be sure to hit that notification bell to stay up to date on great new content. Now, here is your host, Pastor Keith. Good morning. Welcome to FaithCast. This is episode number five. Now, we were we were thinking about going a couple of three weeks longer with this, but I've made the decision that next week will be the last episode for our gospel and rock and roll. I'm not going to do the episode on Christian songs uh, from the Christian genre. And remember last week we talked about how the Jesus movement created a whole new genre of contemporary Christian rock. And there have been times where songs or bands from that genre have crossed over into the mainstream media. And I was going to do an episode just on that, but I decided that it didn't completely fit in with the idea of the premise of this entire series it wasn't just about music. It was about the idea that Jesus is planted in our lives and in many different ways, and we get to experience that in many different ways. And I shared before the mics went out, I was sharing that you know, Kathy and I experienced that in many different ways yesterday, the idea that God is with us. And in this beautiful time of the fall foliage, when people want to get out and see all the, the beautiful you know, changing of the leaves and the colors and everything, you know, people will say that this is part of God's creation. It's a moment when you're, you reflect and realize the world is bigger than us. But there are times in our lives where the people around us will plant little seeds of faith and, and many times that has been done in music and that's what this was about is the idea that as you listen to your secular music that there have been times where where seeds have been planted and what i'm my prayer is that people will, will embrace that and understand that it's okay it's okay to to embrace the truth of jesus christ it's okay to question um, faith. It's okay to, to dig deeper into it and realize that there are millions of other people out there doing the exact same thing, that there is a world bigger than ourselves. And that has been shared a multitude of times in not just faith-based music, not just church music, but in secular music. And that's what we we're building up to. So next week, I'm going to do the five songs that influenced me that I didn't realize until I looked back on life and realized how impactful some of the words of the songs were. And it wasn't until I took time reflecting on my own faith and where I am with Jesus Christ that I looked back on those songs and went, wow, it, seeds were planted back then. And maybe maybe the artist didn't intend for it to happen, and but maybe they did. So doing research going into this week, it was just going to be about coming out of that Jesus movement, because it's so easy to discount times when people completely embrace Jesus and go, well, that's, you know, they, they in fact, the word Jesus freak came out of that, that genre of the Jesus movement. You know, ah, people become Jesus freaks, that's, you know, and you just, and you just write it off. And so I wanted to show today that this, this idea s still happens today. It happens in, in modern music, the times when Artists will share their faith in just little ways, and seeds are planted, and it's and it's cool. One artist I'm not going to talk about today is Kanye West, right? That he was a you know, rapper and very outrageous, did some outlandish things, uh, had quite a, a reputation, and then found Christ, and now he's done an entire Christian sort of turn with his music. That would be one of those episodes of like, well, okay, he's a Jesus freak. That's just over the top. So let's talk about a few that maybe you didn't even realize. And this is what's fun. You guys can fact check me on all of this because if you just type in pop music, you know, go to Google, type it in pop music with Jesus, you can come up with tons and tons. I have too much information to share in the next 15 minutes that I have. So I found I found multiple articles. In fact, I found one article that listed 141 songs between pop, rock, and country that talked about Jesus in one way or another. And so, I want to talk about two artists before I get to this. I, I have one article I want, to, I want to bring up today out of all of them I have. The BBC actually did a an article uh, actually, the the journalist was Mark Savage. He did this back in 2018, and it was five pop songs you probably didn't know were about God. And that's what I'm going to share today. But I want to share 
two songs in the pop genre that influenced faith and, and planted seeds in different ways. And they're artists that I don't know that I ever would have talked about in such a positive light. In fact, the one, I kept getting her name wrong. I kept thinking somebody else sang the song. And the song was, What If God Was One Of Us? And, and I always accredited that song to Alanis Morissette, and I don't know why. But actually, the artist that did that was Joan Osborne. And it was a, a 90s song that just asked the question, what if God was one of us? What if he, he was a slob like one of us, just a stranger on the bus trying to make his way home? And that's, a, that's an intensely profound song that is just blatantly, it was a mainstream pop culture song, but gets you to look at the idea of, hey, wait a minute, what about the person sitting next to you? What about, because that is, that is the basis of, of Christianity right there. That is the idea that, that we are to see the world the way that God sees the world, that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that song just threw it right out there. The second artist I want to talk about is an artist that I don't, I would never listen to unless she was on the radio. I would never go out and buy one of her albums. Looking at her life, her career overall, I struggle with parts of it. Of course, I'm sure people look at my life overall and struggle with parts of it. But And that is Madonna. She has two songs. One I'm going to use for an upcoming episode, and, and that is Papa Don't Preach. And the idea of Papa Don't Preach isn't about religion, preaching religion. It's actually a uh, pro-choice um, or a pro-life song uh, that... You know, she talks about being pregnant and you know she's going to keep her baby and, and she makes this moral decision regardless of the consequences. And and I share that song not because it, it directly ties into this, but it gives a sense of part of who she was as a person, at least in her music. And the, uh, the song that... Um, the song that had great controversy was uh, Just Like a Prayer. And the reason it had such controversy was the video uh, depicted the Messiah as a black man. And I wasn't saved back when that, that video came out. But even then, I looked back on it and went, but, you know, God is the image of us. You know, we are the image of God, which means that we all have this, this idea of who God is in our hearts. And, and so what if Jesus was not the fair-skinned, looking up in the sky, that famous painting, you know, and, and I thought that was a, I thought that was a powerful way to, to plant a seed of faith, and I don't think she intended it that way, I don't know, I didn't do the research on it, it's just one of those things, however, because I'm short on time today, and I apologize because of our technical difficulties, five pop songs you probably didn't know were about God, remember, this is all about I'm going to share these, but this is not just about these five songs. These are about you reflecting on the music you listen to and thinking back on the lyrics and go, oh, you know what? God, God was there. So, number one, Lenny Kravitz, Are You Gonna Go My Way? Uh, the song came to Kravitz in a flash of inspiration. He recalls scribbling lyrics down on a brown paper bag, but it reflects his real-life faith. Uh, and actually, Kravitz has a star... Oh, no, sorry. Kravitz has a tattoo on his back which reads, My heart belongs to Jesus. I didn't know that Lenny Kravitz was a follower of Jesus Christ. Cool. Candy Statton, um, You Got the Love. Candy Statton was back. She was a disco-like star, star, sort of. Um, she wrote the 1980s, and actually the song was re-released in 91, um, and the lyrics is, My Savior's Love is Real. It's sort of one of those songs that crossed over. Uh, it was a popular hit, but by a... Number three, the band U2. There's a lot of history of the band and their their Christian background, their faith. And so a lot of their songs um, are based on biblical teachings. Um, in fact, so many of their songs are based on biblical teachings that churches have started holding U2 Chorus. I'm sorry, to me that's a funny. 
the Eucharist is the the offer, right? So the Eucharist. It's a communion service where the band songs take the place of hymns. Um, the most powerful song, narratively speaking, is "Until the End of the World." And it, it actually, and that song actually talks about Judas um, kissing Jesus in the garden. And so number four they have on here, this one's funny because they say you didn't realize that this was actually a biblical song. 1965's Hit by the Birds. Anybody want to guess it? 15 second delay. For every season. Turn, turn, turn. Yes. The song Turn, Turn, Turn. Right? Okay, I... I didn't grow up saved, and even when I listened to that song, I knew that it came from the Bible. It's basically the chapter 3 of the book of Ecclesiastes, um, which is interesting because, so chapter 3 of the book of Ecclesiastes is when King Solomon is actually reflecting uh, our purpose as human beings here on earth and, and the meaning of life and you know the relationship with God and eternity, and um, so it's... It, People don't go into Ecclesiastes a lot, but when you read back on it, you think about all that Solomon is doing. He's, he's the considered the wisest man to have ever lived, and all that he did and these insights and, and, and his writings and the stuff that was shared in Scripture, and, and yet even he took this time to reflect on what is our purpose? Why are we here? So I struggle with this one being on this list as you didn't know this one was from the scripture because it's the book of Bible. and number five this one really got to me because i didn't know this I, i've danced to this song <laughs> um I, i'm gonna i'm just gonna read this okay so it opens with prince sermonizing over a church organ but a lot of people missed Let's Go Crazy's religious message aimed amid the lyrics about sex and purple bananas. It says, don't ask. The song is a plea to make the most of life without succumbing to the temptations of the devil. Enigmatically characterized as the elevator who is trying to bring us down. For those on the path of righteousness, the reward is the afterworld, a world of never-ending happiness where you can always see the sun day or night. Uh, Prince recorded songs that were more explicitly religious, including a jazz-funk Jehovah's Witness concept album called The Rainbow Children. But he never made faith sound this much fun again. So, uh, Those are the five that this article had. Um, I read another article that talked about Justin Bieber sharing his faith in a song. And then there were a few more here. Uh, I mentioned before Kanye West with Jesus Walks, Mumford and Sons, The Cave, Carrie Underwood, Jesus Take the Wheel. Right, That was her big hit that came out of when she won American Idol, um, which that one I put an asterisk by because, okay, it was a pop hit because she came out of American Idol, but then she went right into mainstream country, and we all know that country music is more prevalent to sharing faith than pop or rock and roll. Uh, Nina Simone's Sinner Man, Bob Dylan, Gotta Serve Somebody, The Fray, You Found Me, Mary Mary, Shackles, Bob Marley, Redemption Song, David Bowie, Word on a Wing, Kendrick Lamar, Faith, The Headhunters, God Made Me Funky. Those are just a few from this article, and like I said, I could, I could start bringing up hundreds more, literally hundreds more songs where faith has been shared. So, my my question for you today would be, and I'd love for you to reply here, or if you are on the YouTube rebroadcast, that you put some put some comments down for us. Let me hear about the music that you listen to. I mean, we've been doing this for five weeks now. And I have to believe that at some point you'd reflect back on this and go, oh, you know, I remember that song. Or maybe you heard a song recently and didn't realize what the words were. I know that for myself personally, I don't listen to much uh, contemporary rock. I don't really listen to much classic rock and rolling. Okay, to be honest, I don't really listen to the radio much at all anymore. 
But at the times when the radio is playing, whether it's when I walk into a store or you know when I go into the cafeteria down at the hospital and the, and the radio is playing, I will actually spend more time listening to the words now. Like what was the intent of the artist? And and it's it's made me ponder a few things. Yeah, some things religious, some things just about the world, some things just seeing something from a different perspective. And that's really what this is all about. Because when we share our faith, when we share our lives, and we're open to actually listening, then we can see how people's lives have been changed in different ways. And that is how faith spreads. That's how joy develops into people's hearts is by not only seeing how other people's lives have been changed, but then wanting to reach out to to enhance other lives. And that is, I think, for true artists, true, um, true creators, they don't do it for the money. They do it they do it to share part of their souls, and and I know I have a I have a quote hanging somewhere here. Um, I, okay, I can actually see it. So it says, "Live your beliefs, and you can change the world." Henry David Thoreau. I've had that hanging for a few years, and that is the essence of artists putting faith into their music and being able to share it in a way that people might reflect on it or people might get a little bit of truth out of it. And this is even more important today. And this is this is more of a lesson as I close today about and how we're going to segue into next week is how we share our lives, especially today where things are so divided and and topics are so extreme that people sort of I don't know, dig their feet in the stand in the sand on their stance and they don't want to hear the other side and often and I've seen this posted on social media that most time people people don't listen to learn people listen waiting to respond and mm-hmm. and when we open our ears and open our hearts and our minds to hearing what other people are saying then we can not only see a larger truth to the world but a larger truth about ourselves and we don't have to push religion to do that and that's sort of the point of this is people write off the truth of Jesus Christ they discount church because it's you know it's dogma it's it's stuff that they've they've opinions that they've decided to believe and they've entrenched themselves in it And they're not open to listening to what other people have to say. And yet here are hundreds of musical artists who have shared little bits of not just faith, but moments of going, look, the world is bigger than ourselves. The world is is going to continue after we're long gone. And we should we should embrace God's message that our job is to try to make it a better place for the generation after us. Uh, in fact, I think down the road I'm going to do an, an episode here on Faithcast about sacrifice and what that really means. It's one of the words that has become a catchphrase and has lost a lot of its meaning. And But in this essence, these artists didn't really sacrifice. They just lived their beliefs and, and they followed their passions, but they weren't afraid to put faith into it. And so I ask you to to think about that today and, and and if you have accepted Jesus in your life that you'd pray about it and if you haven't accepted Christ that you would think about it and, and think about it on a more deeper level than where you're at today and as I close I ask that if you are watching this on the YouTube rebroadcast that you will subscribe to our channel and you know click that bell for notifications because that's what's going to help grow this ministry and if you are if you have a heart to help out the ctc church that there is a a button that you can click either in the description button on youtube on the tdcreek.org website or on our facebook page 
there's a place where you can actually uh, donate to the church so that we can continue this ministry because right now we're attempting to do it on a shoestring budget of zero. So we could really, really use your help in that small way to just help spread the faith and, and share the love. So with that, I'm sorry that the first part of this message got kiboshed. Um, I pray that you you got something out of this today because I felt like I had to sort of rush through it a little bit. But next week, I will do a double sound check and make sure we're okay. And if it's in your heart, uh, show up at the Grange Hall in the Allegheny National Forest at 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning and hang out with us for God's Word and some good fellowship. So anything, Kathy, before I close? No. All right. You all have a blessed day, and we will see you next time on FaithCast. Bye. Bye.